Now imagine I have Edge Connect 6300 in a couple of access points, and I've got four types of access. Right? I've got guest users uh, that I have that I have I have a, a VRF configured for. I've got um, IoT devices. These are like IoT devices in this case would be like things that are not guest but not trusted enough to be in the corporate segment. They're kind of like off on their in their own little domain here. And then finally, we have a third VRF called Corp that has two types of roles or two types of users, employee and contractor. Now, I do realize that this will get this is vastly simplified. You usually have lots more roles in this, lots more complexity. But for just explaining things, let's let's go with this. So we've got guest IoT, um, employee and contractor. These are essentially the sort of the four roles that we're dealing with. How what will this look like in the configuration? So the Edge Connect already knows about these segments. It's got all this stuff configured up here, but how do we handle all this part in the middle? So the first step is to configure the underlay. Now what we mean there is I got my Edge Connect up here. Um, I'm going to physically configure the, the the ports, right? No tagging, it's just LAN zero, slap an IP on it, uh, make sure it's in the default segment. And then on the Edge con on the CX switch, I've got another IP. So just a point to point thing here. We're going to run OSPF. Now, the reason we want to run OSPF here is so that the CX switch here will know about this loopback. And we also want the Edge Connect here to know about this loopback. So OSPF is, is enabling that. Yes, you could just use static routes, I suppose. You could just go to the CX and say, hey, if you want to get to 104106, go to this, you know, this port. Sure. But we want to do it properly, and using OSPF for the underlay is kind of the right way to do it. So first, we set up OSPF. That allows the two Edge Connect loopbacks to configure and talk to each other, all right? We also uh, configure all the ports and get everything set up uh, under, underneath the uh, all, all the plumbing in place. Once all this is in place, you configure the overlay. Um, now, in in uh, central terms, when you go into the Fabric Wizard, you'll see it talks about overlays. The overlay is the is the the VXLAN oh man, the the VNI. It's the um, it's the fundamental B, EVPN, VXLAN, VTEP, all that stuff is what you configure when you set up the overlay. So the first thing that happens, uh, you set up, bring up the EV, e, EBGP EVPN session. But this EVPN session here is is the key because once this comes up between these two loopbacks. Now the now the system can build the VXLAN tunnels and transfer the VNIs from each one of these these overlays that you see at the bottom. So each overlay has a route target, a VNI, which has to be mapped appropriately into the edge connect, and uh, one or more VLANs. So in this case, we have a direct mapping of VLAN 8 to VN, VNI 10008, which maps to the purple uh, segment in the edge connect. The IoT here, same thing, as well as uh, Corp. The Edge Connect itself doesn't know anything at all about VLAN 27 or 23 or 8. These VLANs are down downstream of the Edge Connect. They are never, um, it doesn't come in contact with them. All it sees are, are VNIs and source addresses coming in, in and out of this VXLAN tunnel connected to the LAN side of the Edge Connect. Only the LAN side, by the way, we do not support VXLAN on the WAN side. Next up, of course, is to set up .1x and Mac auth. Um, all this is kind of silly if we don't have some kind of way to distinguish for a given Mac address and IP what role is associated with it. This is normally done through .1x or Mac auth. You can also fall back to um, the role that's assigned to the VNI. So once you have authentication configured, so these last two steps, like the authentication part here and you can do these in either order. I don't know if there's necessarily one that matters, but the very last step is to configure the roles and the policy. So this is probably the trickiest part, to be fair, because there are multiple, as I mentioned before, multiple places where roles manifest. There's um, SD-WAN roles, there are switch roles, AP roles, and there's actually also gateway roles. Okay, once you have all this configured, I can, I can so I have a, I just want to mention this real quick. I have a gaming computer sitting next to me that my kids use that guests use and people all they have to do at this point is walk into my house uh, if they log in as guest gamer they are dynamically and instantaneously placed in the guest segment dhcp re renew occurs to get the guest segment 
If I log in as Adam Powers on that machine, I am immediately and instantaneously placed into the corp segment and given the employee role. So just simply by function of what I when I log into this machine, I don't change the port access VLAN, nothing. It, I simply log into the device and I get a completely different experience depending on who I am. I get a different routing domain. I get a different policy identifier assigned to me. By the way, um, we have lowered the D DHCP timer to 30 seconds. If I go over there, I log in as me. I need to get a new IP because I'm now in the I'm now in VLAN 27. I'm not in VLAN 8 anymore. And so every 30 seconds, this box sitting next to me, DHCP request new IP. So if I log in as someone different within 30 seconds, I'll get a new DHCP IP and I'll be moved into the the guest VLAN or into the court VLAN depending on who I log in as.